Thank you to each and every individual for joining us today. We would like to extend a very warm welcome to those who have been with us for the duration of the program, as well as those who are new to the Columbus Youth Council. My peers and I are pleased to announce that this would not have been possible if without the help of Mayor Andrew Ginther, COSI President and CEO Dr. Bertley, Judge Jiza Page, Franklin County Commissioner Erica Crawley, Council President Shannon Hardin, Council Member Remy, and last but not least, our founder, Council Member Shayla Favor. It is now. <laughs> It is now my pleasure to welcome our first speaker, a native of Columbus, who has served on the Columbus City Council and has also served as an assistant city attorney, who wears many hats and, oh, and who is a graduate of OSU and Georgetown University, sorry, and who wears many hats and has proved to be a public servant who uses their platform to improve upon the lives of Columbus residents both inside and outside of the courtroom, the Honorable Judge Jiza Page. Thank you and good evening everyone. It is an absolute honor to be here with you all this evening and the first inaugural celebration of the Columbus Youth Council. As a former member of Columbus City Council, I am so honored and excited that this current City Council, with the leadership of Council Member Favor, who has founded this program, has found it important to pour into the youth of our city. And I'd like to recognize Council President Hardin, who is with us, as well as Council Member Remy as well. And thank you for your support of Council Member Favor in this effort. I have been one who has been involved with public service really my entire career. Once I graduated from law school, I became an assistant city attorney. I then was appointed and later elected to Columbus City Council, and I now serve on the Franklin County Court of Common Pleas General Division. And I absolutely love the work I do. I am passionate about the community that I live in, and I am very passionate about the youth that we also serve. So I want to encourage you to take the information that you have learned about local government and want to teach the adults in your life because I can guarantee you that there are a few who don't quite understand the difference between city government, state government, and our national government. But further to further educate your peers and also once you turn 18, register to vote. Your voice is important, your family's voices are important, and we need you to participate in the booth. We also encourage and hope that you one day will be sitting in the seats that we are now sitting in. And you have all the foundational tools that you need to be judges, to be council members, to be county commissioners, to be governors, to be senators. And so we are looking forward to the work that you're going to do to continue to make our community a better place to live. So again, congratulations on being the first inaugural class. That means that you all have paved the way for more classes to come. And congratulations. And congratulations and thank you to the members of Columbus City Council for taking the time, the effort, and the funds to pour into the youth of our community. I would now like to introduce our next speaker, Faria Taya. All right, can everybody hear me? Yes, clearly. Okay. Um, my name is Fariha, um, and I'm going to try to keep to my time, otherwise I know Anissa is going to come drag me off here. Um, so I had the privilege of working with um, these young people, young adults, um, throughout the season. Um, and I kind of want to talk about my journey and our journeys collectively and the power of community. So when I first moved to Houston, when I first moved here from Houston, sorry, um, there was like a Young Professionals event, and it was there that I met Council Member Hardin. 
Um, and I was like, man, he dresses nice, so if I can't get a like, uh, connection, at least he'll like, hook me up with some job at the, you know, some clothing store or something. So um, I, met, I met him, he invited me to his, you know, to the city where you all come for your sessions. Um, and then it, you know, again, I wasn't trying to work for the city, but I was new to Columbus trying to establish myself, not only like as an educator and trainer, but also as an artist. And it was just the unfolding of those pathways that I then um, stayed in touch with people. There was his admin I stayed in touch with. Then um, Jiza Page created a program called Lead Us, and I reached out to people. Um, and because people, I was not a stranger to the larger community, things really worked out for me um, in the sense of like getting what I wanted, which is the expansion of my network and community. Um, and then even in that process, the accounting team at the city was like, hey, why aren't you a certified minority business or woman business enterprise? And so I got certified with the city, the state. I had resources to do that. Um, so I say all this to say that the, just one connection can lead you to so many connections. And the power of connection is so um, important, as is the value of community and people like knowing who you are. Um, and when I was like 19, it's a long time ago, um, and I was in Houston, which is like my home city. Uh, I started, I found an ad and I started, um, I called and I said, hey, I want a campaign. And it was for like Congressman Nick Lamson. It was like his earlier campaign. It's like way back. I don't even, way, way back. Okay. Um, and then I just kept on leading to stuff. And then eventually I interned with District F at the city. It was like the first South Asian city council member. Um, and I was really passionate and just wanted to see what it was all about. It gave me perfect exposure to what I felt like I really needed to know about like Houston and the parts of Houston that I didn't know and the intimacy of community even in a city as large as Houston. So I say all that to say like it's the same connections that led me from one internship to another, one handshake to another. Oh, I remember you, you talked to me, da da da. So the power of community is, is so powerful um, and is the power of connection. I definitely want you to remember if anything like what do I do to make it where I want and to have my dreams manifest into reality? Understand that those are the tangible tools that you can use to really conquer that which you're going after. Um, I did wanna take a minute to I apologize. So to take a minute to acknowledge what's going on in the world and especially in what just took place in Uvalde. And I thought a lot about this today when I was like, well, what am I going to say that's more important than honoring people who've been lost and looking at young people at ages eight, nine, and 10 and teachers who not only lost their lives, but they had their dreams stolen from them. And the idea that this country, whether or not it takes your life, literally is so actively involved in snatching the dreams of young people and killing their spirit. And if you have something to hold on to in your life, whatever dream that is, like the power of your dreaming is so important in a society that constantly tries to undermine you and push you in a box and tell you how you're supposed to be because of where you look or your zip code, right? So many of us even in this room, when I was young too, like, I'm not gonna make it. It was like reinforced by my teachers. Um, obviously I had some really great teachers, but you're not gonna go to college, it's not for you, right? And I'm not even first generation college. Or you're not, you only got a scholarship because you're brown, right? Or you're not enough, you don't have enough competency as an ESL student to be an English major and I'm not even an ESL student. So I thought about all those messages and how I, how I digested them subconsciously Right? But it's still the belief in myself and the power of the dreams that allow you to like manifest a life that you really want with all the right tools. And so I definitely think that, think about all the dreams that were stolen from young people and how all your dreams are being attempted to be stolen by society and how it's really not worth it for you to give in and let this society that works so actively to kill your spirit do so. And I think often we undermine 
the damage that we have on people that are still existing in our community and we think are doing okay, but we don't look to them to see why they are not thriving. And that for me as, a, as an educator, that's really important. For me as a person that serves young people, that's really important. And if you just think about your experiences here, right, I think about the very tiny dreams that people have which are equally important. Um, like Shannon Hardin mentioned, the Columbus Promise, right? And it wasn't something that was created overnight. Um, Shayla Favors mentioned in writing that like this being in city council is like the greatest manifestation of public service that she ever thought she could do. Did I get that right? Okay, so I want to make sure, yeah. Um, and so, so many people have these dreams here that you may or may not know about that have come to fruition and it's the small dreams, right? I had a dream to be work for myself and I literally, 95% of my income comes from just contract work. And so often it's not these big dreams, but it's the accumulation of the tiny dreams that allow us to have the big dreams. And I think we owe it to people that came before us. And we don't necessarily recognize that. How much struggle did your ancestors go through for the ones that were still alive to manifest their dreams into reality? How many people have we lost to civil war, to the Middle Passage, on refugee boats, in camps, poverty, starvation, oppression, and the list goes on. And there are so many of your ancestors that you don't even know or that you didn't even hear about that may or may not have made it, but so many of them did make it. And it is the power of their dreams and the manifestation of their dreams that has allowed you to be here today to open the doors for you to live your dream, even if you have it rough, even if you're really struggling during this time, even if you didn't want to wake up this morning and go to school because you didn't know what that's all about. But understand that there has been so much sacrifice and dreams that have come to life for you to live your dreams and believe in them and understand that everything around you in this room is so invested in the power and the dreams of young people. Right? The other day, uh, Nisa asked if she could call me and I said no. I didn't say no, I said, well, I'm really busy, but you can call me between like these two times. And then I had a young person from my school nine years ago say he graduated and wanted to ha have some connections. And I literally dropped everything I was doing. It wasn't even urgent. And I'm like, here's eight organizations. Here's your this, this, that. And he was like, this is great, right? And he had grown up with both of his parents incarcerated, housing insecure. In the school I worked at, we had three principals. So, you know, it was definitely not stable enough stable enough, um, and for him to be like, hey, I believe in the power of young people. I want young people to know just because your parents are incarcerated or unavailable to support you emotionally or financially doesn't mean that you can't make it, right? And I didn't even know that about him, that he had gone to the White House, that he had advocated, or gone to DC and advocated until I read something his mentor wrote. And I said, wow, you don't even tell me that, Kendall. Why did like, I, didn't, I already thought you were brilliant, but you haven't even told me that. And this is somebody who wasn't even my student, like eight years detached. So he went to the same school where I was teaching at. He wasn't even my student. Um, and the, the idea in this example of this young person is that if you're like, hey, I need help, and my community has my back and is there for emotional support, but my grandma can't pay rent, right? I have this idea and I need $300 from the city. Whatever it is, there's people in this room that are so invested in your dreams in a way that you don't even know. And I know that because I've heard Shannon Arden speak. I've heard council member Favor speak, right? Um, you'll hear your mayor speak, but so many people are invested in you, right? And maybe sometimes you're like, oh, my parents don't get it or my siblings don't get it. I don't think I'm gonna make it because of my zip code. I grew up on you know, housing assistance, whatever it is, right? Do not let society's messaging take your dreams away because at the end of the day, other than your body, all you have in the world is your dreams. And people have worked way too hard for you to not live them and for them to come into fruition. So just remember, do not defer your dreams um, and believe in the power of them. And then through community and your connections, I do believe those two are the recipe to success for you to really get where you're trying to go, small or large. All right, thank you. All right, I'd like to introduce Jeremiah Grimes. I was looking to make sure he got scared. Okay, um, Jeremiah goes to Harvest Prep and is from the far east side of Columbus. He loves learning new things and he is a natural facilitator based on what I witnessed last week. 
Um, and he also loves to watch long TV shows. Um, but he is going to be the next speaker, um, so please welcome him. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, friends and family, for coming out this evening and for supporting our Youth Council graduates. Thank you, Councilmember Favor. You have led by example, and thanks to your efforts, students like me can benefit from this incredible Columbus Youth Council program, which will have a lasting impact on generations to come. To my fellow classmates, congratulations on this huge accomplishment. To be able to come on this stage today and present ourselves as young adults is no small feat. As we transition to college into our senior years, I want to remind you that we have worked hard to get here and will have to work harder to make the impact we want to see in our community. We must, be, we must lead by example. Are you prepared to be leaders? We must be determined and unwavering in all that we do. It will not be easy nor a walk in the park. The road will be treacherous and long, but I believe we can do it. We must continue to do as we've done, be hardworking, be responsible, and be confident. Your intellect and your heart got you here, and those characteristics will help you lead by example. I believe each and every one of you will go out and do great things. Now it's time to pass the torch down. Over the past year, my peers and I expanded our knowledge on city government and met various community and department leaders who gave us a glimpse into the hard work and hard work they do on a daily basis. Their stories inspired me and I'm certain my peers left each session motivated. I'd be remiss to not mention one of my favorite experiences from this program, so I will share a quick story. In February, our class had the opportunity to go on a field trip to the police academy. I honestly hesitated about this trip for many reasons, primarily due to the ongoing conversations taking place in our community and among youth about police and community relations. As a young black man, it is rare for me to see someone that I can identify with in government, specifically in the public safety sector. Police officer Elaine Bryant shared her remarkable journey with our class and reminded us that it only takes one individual to pave the way for future generations. I hope to one day break down barriers for the youth that look like me so that they too can soar. Once again, I'd like to thank council member Shayla Favor, her dedicated staff, instructors Mr. Daya, Faria, and Ms. LeBan for their support and efforts to keep us engaged and informed on all things Columbus. To our honorary guests, you know better than anyone that the road to becoming a public servant is a long one, but one worth pursuing, so we will keep pushing. We will push ourselves as you did and continue to do so. Know that you are appreciated and will be missed. With that, I'd like to thank once again, congratulate my, excuse me, with that, I'd like to once again congratulate my peers on completing the 2021 CYC program and welcome our keynote speaker, Franklin County Commissioner Erica Crawley. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for that warm introduction. Um, my name is Erica Crowley, and I have the pleasure of serving as Franklin County Commissioner and Board President. Um, and I bring greetings on behalf of the Franklin County Board of Commissioners and my colleagues, um, John O'Grady and Kevin Boyce. I am truly, truly ecstatic to be here today and offer you all my sincere congratulations on completing the Columbus Youth Council program. And so if we can just give a warm round of applause to our graduates. Thank you so much, Councilwoman Favor, for creating this opportunity for our youth. Um, thank you so much for your leadership in inviting me here today to be a part of today's celebration. 
As a mother and as an advocate, I understand how important it is to listen to our young people. I have twin girls who are 17 and they'll be 18 next year and what they have to say is valuable. Not only are our youth our future, but they are our present. You are our present. You are leaders, you are change makers, you are world builders who will make our community even more vibrant and progressive. During the 133rd General Assembly, um, when I was serving as a state representative, I had introduced House Bill 638, which would have created a Legislative Youth Advisory Council, which is why I'm even more ecstatic to be a part of this today. I sponsored this legislation because I believe that every organization, no matter what it is, and whether it's public or private or nonprofit, but especially governmental um, entities, which exist to serve all people, need to learn and listen to our younger members of our society. As an elected official, I work for you. We shouldn't be providing you a seat at our table when it comes to making policy that affects you and your families and your village. We should be coming to your table. I dream that this board would be made up of young people from all across our state alongside state elected officials and it would be a sounding board for critical topics such as education, employment, mental health and addiction services and the environment, as well as learning about state, local um, and federal government, which I know you learned about in this program. These are all issues that not only impact you today, but will have long lasting consequences on your future. So you deserve to have a voice and a vote on these important discussions. At Franklin County, we understand how important it is to engage with our young residents. Um, that's why my colleagues at the Board of Commissioners and uh, our partners with Job and Family Services created a Franklin County Youth Council. Um, and we continue to expand um, our programs to include uh, more programs for our youth with camps and paid internships and apprenticeship programs. And that's why I'm so proud to serve on this board, because we really care about our kiddos and teens and we make them a priority. I'm also just proud to serve on this board as the first black female president commissioner to be in this space, because I do believe that representation matters. But every day that I serve in this role, I hope to be an inspiration and a model of what's possible for young people who have a similar background as me and who look just like me. I strive to mentor and support as many rising stars in our community as possible because I've seen firsthand how important these relationships are, as Faria talked about earlier. I understand what it means to have a stable person in your life and how vital it is to your development as well as exposing you to different opportunities. Our youth need someone that can depend on, who they can depend on when things get tough and to provide direction and support on how to tackle next steps. I definitely would not be where I am today if it was not for my Aunt Marvel. And people have heard me talk about this story all the time. Uh, because it's so true and it's so foundational to me. My Aunt Marvel took me under her wing at a young age. She took me to church, she was my confidant, and ultimately inspired me to run for office. Amongst all the craziness in politics, I was sitting on the sidelines frustrating and wanting to contribute to my community. And when she was in the hospital back in 2007, we were talking about um, who would be the president of the United States, Barack Obama, and who would be the voice for our community. And if he got elected, who would come after him? And she was in the hospital and she had taken down her oxygen mask and she said, why not you? And it caused me to think long and hard about what I could become because I never thought about myself as someone who would be in a public spotlight or be a leader like that. I just knew I wanted to be an attorney and advocate in the courtroom. But when she said, why not you? I then asked myself, why not me? And so today, no matter what it is that you think is next for you or what your hopes and dreams are, as she talked about, I want you to always come back, why not me? If not me, then who? When I think about my aunt, she is not, no longer here today. 
It is only because she poured into me, she told me I could be anything that I wanted to be, that I mattered, that I was valued, I was valued and I was loved. And so if nobody told you today, I'm here to tell you that you matter, that you are valued, and that you are loved, and you can be anything that you want to be. It can be intimidating running for office, and I want all of you to run for office <laughs> at some point in time. <laughs> but I believe that if it's what you are called to do, and know that in this space, this is where you can really make a difference and have an impact, then you should pursue running for office with all your might. Not every elected official has a family history of politicians, college graduates, and so on, but everyone has a story, everyone has an experience, and something they can offer to make our society better. In the same way we use data and studies to work on policy and legislation, we also have to listen to the narratives and humanize what we do. I always say, I am my neighbors and my neighbors are me. Almost every circumstance that I hear from, from my neighbors in Franklin County, I have faced or know someone who has faced them. Whether it's poverty, unemployment, living in unaffordable housing, parents with a history of substance abuse who later overcome, overcame their addiction, trouble finding quality childcare for my children, are all issues that have been a part of my story. I believe it is important that those who are elected to represent you actually know what your struggles are and reflect on you know, what you face and how we can make a difference. Having a more diverse represent, represent, ooh, why am I struggling today? A more diverse government will reflect positively on, type, on the types of policies we put in place and uplift all of our residents. While my background motivates me and it informs my work, so does my experience in the United States Navy. My time serving our country helped me become more disciplined and grow in a structured environment. It made sense for me at the time, and I am grateful for these experiences. Alongside fulfilling jobs in the sciences, technology, and the arts, I also know that the military offered me a very viable career path, and I would like for all of our students to know, and our youth to know, that the military doesn't have to be a secondary option that we can do better educating our youth on post-secondary alternatives as a whole to include the military, apprenticeships, trades, as well as college. And so please know that there is a world of opportunities waiting for you. So find the topic that sets your heart on fire and add fuel to that flame. You have already begun this process by completing the Columbus Youth, City, uh, Columbus youth Council program. You have spent time learning the ins and outs of local government to become stewards in this community. Long after this program ends, keep in mind, your voice matters. The people who are closest to the problems are always closest to the solutions. You deserve a safe space and an opportunity to be engaged, educated, and made aware of not only the policy-making process, but the exact policies that will affect you, your friends, and your family. And speaking of safe spaces, as I get ready to close, I cannot leave without talking about the tragedies that we are all experiencing as a collective, from children being murdered yesterday in school, to our um, elderly just going to the grocery store to buy groceries, the domestic terrorist who killed 19 children and two teachers yesterday was 18. The terrorist that killed regular old black folks going to the grocery store was 18, is 18. So I wanna give you this call to action. If you see something, say something. If you are on social media or in chat rooms, whether it's gaming or something else, and people are posting about things that would be harmful to you and our community, report it. Because you and your peers deserve to grow up in a world that's safe. You deserve to grow up in a world where you can have fun and have every opportunity to live up to your fullest potential to have your dreams realized. You deserve that. 
And when we as elected officials fail you and we fail to live up to what you have placed us in these positions to do, I call on you to hold us accountable. I call on you to then run for office. And I know that it's a scary time, it's a dark time, and the road ahead may look gray and, and dark, but there's always light on the other side. And when it's darkness at night, joy does come in the morning. And so even when we're scared and we're not sure what to do, we can always push forward. And so I will leave you with the words of one of my favorite authors, Audre Lorde. And she said, when I dare to be powerful, to use my strength in service of my vision, then it becomes less and less important whether I am afraid. And so with that, I say congratulations again to you all, and I look forward to watching each and every one of you grow into strong, confident, and committed leaders right here in Central Ohio. Thank you. apologize. I have the distinct honor and privilege of introducing a man who needs no introduction, our great mayor, Mayor Andy Ginther. Thank you so much, President Crawley, and thanks for that inspiring message. It's always difficult uh, to follow a great speaker and a passionate public servant, uh, and so grateful for your leadership and service as part of the Franklin County Board of Commissioners. Uh, to Dr. Bertley and the team here at COSI, uh, thank you for having us. This is a great space. Uh, the number one children's science museum in America because of Dr. Bertley and his team here. He also serves us on the uh, Columbus Airport Authority Board. Dr. Bertley, thank you for, for having us here tonight. So to Judge Page, to Council Member Favor, who made this incredible effort possible. Thanks for your vision, your leadership, your commitment to making this. So I have some prepared comments, but I'll just kind of speak from the heart tonight. And I hate to rush out on you, but my 11-year-old has a choir concert at 6.30, so I'll be uh, hitting it quickly here. I can't miss it. It's not going to be very long, so I can't be late. Um, <laughs> my first experience in exposure to city government was in the seventh grade at Dominion Middle School. And I shadow this very young uh, council member named John Kennedy, who served several terms on city council and then served on the Court of Appeals. Um, and it was an incredible experience. Jerry Hammond was the president of city council, a tour de force that did so much great things, so many great things in our community. Uh, but uh, got to meet some incredible folks, Les Wright, Ben Espy, other great uh, folks that were serving this community. Uh, and it really kind of uh, lit a fire in me. Uh, thought about service at the federal and state level, and I appreciate what folks do at the federal and state level, but I knew early on local government and local service is where the action is. Former Mayor Coleman always told me being mayor of Columbus was the best job he ever had, and at this point in my career, I'd have to agree. Because uh, even on the tough days, you live in a dynamic, vibrant community uh, that continues to grow and focus on making sure that everybody can share in our success. And the reason that is so is because we are a young city, a growing city, a city on the move. And I'm so excited to be with you tonight to congratulate you as graduates of this Columbus Youth Council uh, effort because I'm just keeping the seat warm for you. I'm just keeping the seat warm for you. And I cannot wait to see what's next for each and every one of you. I'm a proud Columbus City Schools graduate, Whetstone class of 93. I know that sounds ancient, but I got the gray hair to prove it. Uh, and regardless of whether you're uh, attending a Columbus City School or one of the other great schools that you represent, um, you're part of this community. And one of the things I talk about all the time is our 
willingness and commitment to our young people, particularly as we come out of this pandemic and the recovery ahead, will really reflect where we are as a community 10 or 15, 20 years from now. Do we lift you up? Do we invest in you? Do we put you in positions to be successful? Not to be around the table, but to convening and facilitating and driving the conversation and helping us figure out the solutions for our future. We're gonna grow by a third. We're already over 900,000 people in the city, over two million in the region. Initially, that was supposed to be by 2050. Some recent developments, you might have heard of Intel or something like that. I think that growth is gonna happen and be realized by 2038, I would argue by 2040. We need you, we need you now to make sure as this growth happens that it's dynamic, it's inclusive, and it's through the lens of equity so that we have a community that's fit for you to lead and for you all to pass on to the next generation. God bless you. Congratulations. Thank you, Council Member Favor. Thank you so much, Mayor Ginther. We really appreciate your attendance tonight. At this time, I would like to welcome Council Member Shayla Favor and Program Instructor Andrew Dyer and joining me in presenting certificates to our 2021 Columbus Youth Council Fellows. Um, and let's give another round of applause to all of our speakers, please. May I ask Olivia to rise? Olivia Barton. Zaina Conte. Zachary Crawwell. Sadaf Dada. Jeremiah Grimes. Vidya Karel. Nashida Corley. Alyssa Kwao. Victor Liu. Umar Umar. Rachel Saka. And last but certainly not least, Nairobi Whitfield. Congratulations, class of 2021. Good evening, everyone. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. All right, making sure everyone's still awake. It's still light outside. Um, I, was, I was going to say I was going to apologize if I get a little emotional, but I'm not going to apologize. Because I think that the times that we are in right now, it necessitates us being as authentic and being genuine as much as possible. And so if I tear up, uh, it's between you and I, right? I really want to thank you all for being here tonight to celebrate our 2021 Columbus Youth Council cohort. And before I get to my, my prepared remarks, uh, today feels like a dream. I remember in 2019 when this all came to fruition and we were so excited and we had our first cohort and then 2020 happened, and you all know what happened after that. And so to see all of you progress through this, and there were times where we thought we might have to stop uh, because the numbers kept rising, or they'd go down, or they would rise again, and we wanted to make sure that you all were safe. Uh, to be here at this moment, to be in COSI with you and your families, it feels like a dream come true. And so I just wanna say thank you to the parents Thank you to the guardians, thank you to the loved ones for trusting your youth with us 
over the past nine to 10 months. Uh, without you all and your support, uh, today would not have been possible. Thank you to Mayor Ginther, Council President Hardin, Council Member Emmanuel Remy, State Senator Herschel Craig, who unfortunately could not be here this evening, Franklin County Commissioner Erica Crawley, Judge Jaisa Page, and COSI President and CEO Dr. Bertley for being here and for helping us recognize our students on their completion of the Columbus Youth Council program. There's a quote by Marion Wright Elderman that has always stuck with me. She says, children cannot be what they cannot see. Children of color are now a majority of all public school students and will soon be a majority of all children in America. Yet our boardrooms, our courtrooms often do, do not reflect that. So when I joined Columbus City Council in 2019, I knew it was important that I create an opportunity for our young folks to immerse themselves in city government, to see a black woman standing before them as a Columbus City Council member or as a county commissioner. It demonstrates that not only can they dream it, but they can be it. Today has been a heavy day for many of us. In just the last two weeks, our country has suffered two mass shootings and the loss of countless innocent lives. In Buffalo, a racially motivated hate crime against the black community. And yesterday, at an elementary school in Texas. Time and time again, we are heartbroken by the news of another mass shooting. Part of our healing must be the commitment to do everything in our power to keep these events like these from happening in a nation that continues to face a crisis of gun violence. Tonight, we wrap our arms around our young folks just a little tighter. We stand up and prevail and continue to advocate for stricter gun laws and for a better tomorrow. Young people are our future. It is not only critical we empower them to dream big, but we provide them with the tools to be in the seats where they can make a change, where they can pass common, common sense gun legislation, provide more mental health support for our communities, create access to affordable housing, and a future where they can be safe. But more than just our future, they are our present. They have transformational ideas, strong opinions, and beliefs, and they lead with confidence and compassion. I have learned all that by watching the students in this program. It's important to pour into the youth so that when you are in positions of change, when they are able to choose their path, when they are able to reach behind and hold out a hand for those coming after them, that they do it and they have the confidence and the support to know how. For me, the Columbus Youth Council is an investment in our future, in our students, and in the change we want to see in our community. The city of Columbus is committed to investing in our youth. Just this past Monday, Columbus City Council and Mayor Ginther announced a $1.37 million investment in our youth through a summer grant initiative with churches and neighborhood organizations. The money will fund nonprofit youth programming and anti-violence efforts, including leadership development, entrepreneurship, life skills, training, and job placement. I'd like to extend my deep gratitude and appreciation to Mayor Ginther, Council President Hardin, my colleagues, and their leadership and advocacy to make this a reality. And finally, to our 2021 cohort, thank you for your commitment this year, for your curiosity, your eagerness, your vulnerability, and for always bringing your full, true selves. You all showed up ready to learn and to jump into anything that you were tasked with. We can only provide you with an opportunity, but it was your choice to go after it. So thank you for choosing to be a part of this program. 
Additionally, I want to once again thank the parents, the loved ones, the relatives. Without your support, your students would not be here. And finally, I'd like to ask my team to come to the front. Anissa Lieben, Sundeepti Jindo, Andrew Dyer, Ms. Faria, come on, you're part of the team too. Uh, over here. <laughs> These four individuals are the reason why we are all here tonight. We don't do this work in silos. We do this in partnership and collaboration with strong team members who are committed to public service. And each and every one of you have donated your time to these young folks without question. You have leaned in and helped out wherever and whenever you can. I am so incredibly grateful for you all helping to bring this dream to fruition. And so thank you from the bottom of my heart. I feel like I'm about to cry. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for your work to see this all come together. There is something hopeful in seeing the world through the eyes of our youth. And I can assure you, I have learned as much as you all have learned from us. Whether or not your future is in public service, you all have so much to give to your communities, to our community, and I cannot wait to see your mark on the world. Thank you, and we will now have a brief intermission, followed by a performance by the Columbus Urban Strings, Urban Strings, excuse me, and a live demonstration by COSI. Thank you. Thank you. 